Live. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Rochelle Rivera again of Professional VAs and ProfessionalVAs.com. And today will be our first day or our first session of the free VA coaching and freelancing program. And since we have that, I'm going to share my screen so you can see my presentation. Oops. Can everybody see my screen now? Yeah. Yes, thank you. All right. Okay, welcome VAs. And for those who are aspiring VAs, again, um, we are the Professional VAs Academy. Our website is the professionalvas-academy.com. You can find us there. For those who don't know me, I just want to share with you a little something about me. Back in 2003, where the VA concept was introduced to me uh, by my brother. He's from Davao. Gabs, he's also from Davao. Um, and then I started applying in um, other VA sites. It was the online jobs at PH at that time. Um, I was offered a VA job after my resume was posted there for about three weeks. But before that, I was submitting a lot of resumes uh, um, online and I'm answering a lot of um, interviews and emails and what else. Um, there, I've been doing everything I can to get the job. And until finally, after three weeks, the person that I didn't apply for um, called me up and he scheduled me for an interview and luckily I got the job. This site advertises that VAs can, will only accept for $1.58 an hour. But I didn't know the VA rate at that time, so I was happy and lucky, feeling lucky that I got the job at home and I get to enjoy my kids. So that's where I started. While working for that client, I learned that the VA, VA business concept is not just you know as a VA employee. We can do the business by ourselves and we can um, increase our rates depending on how we package yourself as a business and depending on the skills that we offer. So I started learning the system and the rest is history. Now, going back to basic and checking up, this is our topic for today. Again, we'll go back to the modus 1 to 5, which is the, the main core of uh, this coaching program. I'm going to give you a recap of what is a VA, what is not, the, your, the importance of your personal story and message, how to get started, and the difference of you know having a website and social media, and how to get started by planning your day and being productive. Now, um, for module one, I'm sure everybody has learned what is a vir virtual assistant, how to become a VA, where do I need to start, what do I want to be, if you want to be an employee VA or an entrepreneur VA, and you've already set your dreams and goals using the SMART goals for short, medium, and long-term goals. The SMART, um, I'm going to show that to you later. Okay. Now, the difference of being an employee VA and a business owner VA is a lot. Sometimes most people mistook VA as just employees because that's what, that's what we're used to. We're used to applying for jobs in agency sites and in bidding sites like Odesk. So we thought that that's just the, the VA concept. But there is another concept of the VA. There's another model for VAs, which is becoming a business owner. That means you have to find clients on your own, and you have to package yourself like a business owner as well. Now, um, everybody is also confusing VAs for freelancing. I just took this meaning from Wikipedia. It says here very clearly that freelancing VAs are a freelancer, a freelance worker, or a person is someone who is employed and is not committed to a particular employer for long term. These workers are sometimes represented by a company or an agency that resells their labor and that of others to its clients with or without project management and labor contributed by its regular employees. Others are completely independent. So freelancing, that means you're working for yourself. Um, that means you're also a business owner, but you don't have a team. 
or maybe you can you know, you can have a team as well but freelancing is something like um you want to work you're working alone you're getting your clients alone by yourself normally by yourself because you're a free freelance either you can be tied up to a company like those um agents or was that real estate agents were in there tied up to a certain company but they don't receive a certain um was a salary a monthly salary but then they only receive commission based on their sales and based on their um, performance so that's what freelancing is and for virtual assistant what happened why is this blue? for virtual assistant oops um which is typically abbreviated as a va it's called also called a virtual office assistant it is also self-employed and provides professional, administrative, technical, or creative social assistance to clients remotely from a home and office. So there is a similarity between a freelancer and a virtual assistant business owner because they're both getting their clients on their own and they're both um, working on their own on their own um, term, uh, terms on their own time. Now, earlier I told you about the goal setting. Um, in if you have watched the virtual assistant training module one, I have asked you as a homework to write your goals, write your goals in short term, medium term, and long term goals. Short term goals would be from six months to twelve months. Medium term will be from three to five years, and long term goal from six years to ten years and above. The main reason why I ask that is so that you'll have a roadmap on where you want to go. You have to first. You have to understand where you are right now. Are you jobless? Do you have a client for part time? Do you have a full time client? Are you working full time? Or you're you're a full time mom, but you have you can you know you can spare two or three hours time to start your VA business. That's very important. The second one, you have to set your goals so that you will know where you want to go. Let's say twelve months from now, five years from now, or ten years from now, because we have to bridge the gap between where you are right now and where you want to go. It's like going to an island. We have to ride a boat. And we have to um, ride a boat for, let's say, one hour or 30 minutes to get to the island, to, to get to our destination, to where we want to go. That's how I, I put it. Um, it is important because your goals are your price. The price for everything that you've worked for. The price for um, becoming, for working so hard. The price for everything that you're doing. So what's important is you have to keep your eyes on the price so that you, you won't be misled, you won't be stalled, and you won't stop doing what you're doing. I know there might be some cases that you will feel that you are um, tired, or maybe you're depressed, or you're down, or you're out of money, or you feel that you're out of time, you feel that you're out of opportunity to do it. But the secret of starting a business any business, even a sari sari store, is by knowing where do you want to go after 12 months. Do you want to still keep your sari sari business, or do you want after 12 months that your sari sari business has upgraded to perhaps a carinderia or a, a snack a snack house or maybe a, a small grocery store? So there should be a plan. There should be a goal. Now, in setting the goals, it should be smart. It should be specific. So you have to, for your short-term goals, for example, after six months, I want to buy an iPhone 5 because right now I only have um, Nokia with the flashlight cell phone. So you have to make sure that after six months, you will buy that. Now how? You have to put the price of the iPhone 5. How much is an iPhone 5? 35,000? 35, 36,000? And how can I get, how can I earn that 36,000 in six months? So by getting clients. Um, and by working for clients, how much, how many hours do I want to work for that client? And then if I will work for a client, let's say for 5 or $10 an hour, how much will I save? How much will I be spending? So in order for me to do that, how much should I be saving on a weekly or on a monthly basis in order to achieve that 35000 So in six months, at least for 35000 you have to save more than 5000 a month, let's say 6000 a month, in order to um, save that. Uh, money for the iPhone 5 that I want. So that's being specific. But then there's a lot of processes in order for you to do that. Okay? So there, there should be a measurable. So you have to measure it. That's why I gave you an amount. I gave you a specific thing that you want, and then you have to put in an amount. 
You have to measure it. And at least measure how you are going to achieve it. Not just, I want an iPhone 5 and then I will just sit here and relax and watch what? YouTube all day and do Facebook all day. That's not how it is. Second one, it should be attainable. You don't put a goal that I want to buy a car worth two million for six months. That's unreasonable unless, you know, you'll be doing something illegal or something like that. But if you if you are doing that uh, goal, if you want to achieve that goal for six months, um, using the, the plans that you have in place right now, using your business, it has to be attainable. All right. Next one, realistic. Attainable and realistic kind of sound the same because um, setting up a goal, let's say that I want to go to Malibu and have a vacation in six months time using my business money, using my business in 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 my business income, that's not realistic at all. right? And it has to be time bound. That's why I said six months from now I want to buy an iPhone. And you have to make sure that within six months time you will buy your iPhone because that is your price. That is the difference of setting your goals and keeping your eyes on the price. Because you will keep on working and saving money for the next six months in order to achieve your goal. That's just one goal. That's just one iPhone 5. What if you have a lot of goals? You want to buy let's say, a new bag, a new shirt, and new shoes, how much would all of those wants would cost you? And then how much work you need to do in order to achieve those wants, in order to save enough money for all your wants for the next six months' time. And we're going to do the same for your medium-term and long-term goals. So that we are planning and marketing plan and um, business plan um, should work. Because for medium term and long term goals, you have to set your road um, properly. You have to have this um, road map of where you want to go and how you want to do it. That's why following your plans and doing exactly what you need to do on a daily basis is very important. Now, what will be next? We have set our goals. The next one is you identify your ideal clients. Who do you want to work with? Um, do you want to work with coaches? Do you want to work with dentists, with doctors, with um, what else? With restaurant owners? Do you want to work with people who are in VA industry as well, who are also VAs? Things like that. You have to set an ideal client. The reason behind setting an ideal client is that so you can target them, you can target all your materials. For example, you have a sales letter or you have a website wherein you have a a great copy, a great sales letter for your ideal clients. You can address it directly to them. Let's say, hi, are you tired of uh, becoming a business owner and getting tired of your bookkeeping jobs? I am a VA and I help, for example, your ideal clients are restaurant owners. I help restaurant owners free up their time by taking away their bookkeeping jobs. So it's like you're speaking directly to your ideal clients and then by doing that, you get to connect with them uh, better. It's like um, you're targeting an apple, you're looking at the apple, and you're holding your arrow, you're looking directly right at it. Rather than you're targeting an apple and you're blindfolded and you're just shooting everywhere. That's that's the difference between setting an ideal client and between just you know getting everybody that that can hear or that can see your website and that can hear what you want what you're doing. Next, you have to identify your services. What do you want to do? What are the things that you love doing? Of course, if you will be offering a service, it's better that you offer the service that you love most. Just like me, I started with blogging and social media because that's what I want to do. But then I would not offer um, services that I don't like doing. Let's say bookkeeping. That is something that I don't like doing. So. I won't, I won't offer that even if somebody asks me, hey Ross, do you know bookkeeping? Yes, I do, but I don't like doing that. So I might as well help you find another VA that is good for bookkeeping. Because if you do that, if you, um, if you set yourself to just offer what you want to do, you will be happy at your work, you will be more productive, and you don't feel like you're working at all. So that's the difference between doing what you love and doing what you just need to do. Right? You have to... Um, identify your ideal business model. What you want to be? Do you want to do just freelancing? Just you know, get um, clients on your own, and you're happy with that. You don't like to 
train a team, you don't like to um, pass jobs, or you don't like to subcontract jobs to other people, you just want to work by yourself and in your own terms, then you can be. Or do you want to become a VA business um, with a team? You will be subcontracting to your teams. You have to look at them. You have to um, check on their performance on a daily basis if they're doing everything right. And you have to make sure that you're meeting client specifics. So you have to understand that. Okay. The other things that you need to set are the company name and the theme and color. Um, this, is, this is something to do with branding. Company name is something that is very hard to think about. Because um, sometimes we would, 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 would um, we think that, oh, it's just a company name. I'll just put my, my, my name there, and then that's it. What if your name is hard to pronounce, like my name, Rashifel Rivera? What if your name is very common, like um, Linda Davis? So there might be a lot of people that will come up. So you have to think of uh, the name that resonates with you, the name that you want. Sometimes the company name are like slogans, like the leaveyourmessage.com. So it can be like that. So give it your your variation, but then just make sure that any name that you pick is available in the domains. So you check with GoDaddy, with Bluehost, and Go GhostGator first. And at least um, you have to have a you have to reserve at least two to three other names in case those names aren't available. And of course, theme and color. As for me, I chose orange. And um, gray because orange is like a friendly color, and gray not too black and you know not too not too dark for me. So I like the color combination of gray and orange. So you have to think of that as well because your color and your um, theme would resonate to your personality and to the the kind of environment that you want to bring your audience to or your market to. Okay, now. Module two. Module two is where to start. Um, personal story, defining your skills, services, and target audience. Define your ideal client. Strengthen your message by branding, business name, theme color, and logo. Marketing via social media, online tools, recommended sites. Ten ways to build authority. Okay. Um, now, where do you want to start? If you have already set set your goals and um, well, that's what that goals, um, ideal client, and services. Next thing you want to do is to um, define or sh um, bring out your personal story and message. What is your personal story? How did you start in the business? How did you learn about it? What made you decide that you want to put up a business? What is it for? Who it is for? Um, sometimes we might realize that personal story and message might not be important. Why? Because I just want to offer my services. Why do I need to share them my story? Well, it is very important. Because if you are a business owner, you have a website. If you have a website, you have to put something there. What will you put there? What stories would you put there? You don't want to put somebody else's story or, you know, J.K. Rowling story in your website, right? You want to put your story there. Second one, stories connect you to your ideal clients. That means that there are other people out there that may be having the same stories as you are, or there are other people out there that may like your personal story. So you are going to use that in order to strengthen your message to your clients. You are going to use that in order to connect with them, not just to tell stories for nothing. Okay? And then you have already defined your skills and services. So what do you want to offer? Right? So you have to. Um, target your your ideal client, your ideal audience with the right services. For example, um, with my first example as um, restaurant owners, that they need they need was that uh, bookkeeping jobs. Okay, most rest restaurant owners really do find bookkeeping tasks um, very tedious and time consuming. So you have to connect your services to your ideal client. Do they really need that? What if you're offering something else and your ideal client doesn't need that? So you have to answer the a question or you have to give a solution to the problem of your ideal client. So that's where your services should be. Okay. So again, defining your ideal client and connecting the services that you want to offer to their to the solution to their problem. And again, strengthen your message. 
for example, uh, my message um, to my clients, for me right now, um, if you're going to go to my website, you will see that my message is the same, that I became a virtual assistant um, because I, I don't like to work in corporate anymore. And then when I found out that virtual assistants um, are only receiving $1.58 minimum up to $5 an hour here in the Philippines, and then I found out that in the U.S. and in other um, progressive countries, they charge $20 and $25 an hour. I was so sad, and it made it made my heart, literally, it made me feel, I don't know what that time while I was trying to um, watch a webinar that they're promoting VAs in the Philippines accepting $1.58 an hour, and I've seen the huge difference in the VA race in the U.S. I feel like crying, and I feel like, you know, I'm going to burst because I felt so abused. I felt just because I don't know this, they will just, you know, give me one dollar fifty eight cents, even if my skills are at par with the US VAs and the UK VAs and those progressive countries. But then I realized it's also not their mistake. They're just business owners. But then they just chose to to do a business model like that. Um, I put the blame on myself. And in other Filipinos that doesn't know what happened, that doesn't know that what VAs are worth. And then I realized again, um, as I go on searching and I and as I keep on watching and watching webinars and reading a lot of blogs about VAs, that I can do something about it. If they don't know, why don't I just tell them? Why don't I just let them know about it? And that's where the VA, the Professional VAs Academy started. So that's my story. That's my personal story. And instead of attracting clients, I also attract VAs like you, which um, who are who want to become VAs and who want to start their VA business as well. So that's where my my business, my personal story, in my message started. And I'm doing that right now in all of my marketing and social media campaign. Um, I I didn't focus myself in the professional VAs alone which is uh, the main goal is to serve clients, Mo most probably um, VAs as well. I want to work with VAs and help them with their VA business. And again, I have the second goal to help new and starting VAs to learn the bis VA business concept in freelancing, that there is more opportunity to that. Okay, So I started creating marketing plan on how I'm going to do that, how am I going to show my clients that this is how I work, this is my business model, and how I'm going to spread the message that, you know, hey, everybody, Filipinos and um, Indians or those from Serbia or from other poor countries that are receiving VA rates from $1, $2 to $5 an hour, there is more opportunity to that. And I can help you do that by showing you how I did it. Okay? Sorry for the dogs. They're barking. <laughs> All right. Then the online tools. Um, Normally, you start with Google Docs. You familiarize with yourself with that. It's the same like um, the Microsoft Word in Excel, but it's um, on the website. Next time, uh, the next one is um, the the Skype or the Hangouts, where clients will um, interview you via that that tool. And there are other tools as well that you can see in um, the modules that we have. So I will just suggest you to check out the modules in the PowerPoint presentation in SlideShare. They're all shared and it's all free. So you can check out those tools online because I can't go over all of them right now. We might run out, run out of time. Now, recommended sites. You go to my website, professionalvas.com slash blog. You can see all of my blogs there. You can also check um, the techimentor.com slash freebies. She has a lot of free um, free videos, free webinars there. She has also launched a VA school very recently, so you can check vaschool.com. VA school and another site that where I learned so much is the leapfrogva.com. You go find Sheila Davis in Google Plus, and she's there. All of her videos are awesome. That's where I learned most of my knowledge right, right now. Now, 10 ways to build authority. This is um, a blog that I wrote before. It's also in the ebook. I'll send you everyone a copy so you would know about it. Okay? Next, answer the following questions What kind of job I like doing? How much do I want to earn? 
why do I want to set up a business? Of course, your story and message again will be there. And if I'd be doing something for free, what is it? If you've reached your financial goal, would you stop working? And why? Now, later on in the coaching, um, coaching proper, I will tell you why these stories or these questions are important. But it's, I really suggest that right now you grab a pen and paper, you write this down, you start answering. Next one for our module three, your story and message is already there. You have to identify your niche and your niche marketing. Your niche is um, the services or the product that you want to offer online. Niche marketing um, is selling or um, spreading your, yes, it's selling um, and spreading your, your niche or showing your niche to everyone that needs it. Let's say my, my niche is a VA service. And who needs VA services? Those small business owners. And I want um, to target my market in the US, in the Canada, Australia, and the UK those progressive countries so the, the, that's my niche market I am tapping them in order to um, to offer them my services now showing you a sample of Filipino online job rates well these online job rates are in uh, module 3 again you can check out the presentation in slideshare.com then recommended social media pages I did start with um, Oh yes, I started with the website, but then a, a, a few months before that, come September, I didn't have my website yet. I only have my Facebook page. I don't have um, my LinkedIn and my Twitter page optimized yet. I just started with Facebook and the Facebook group. I started um, posting every day regarding what I do and regarding what I want to, regarding the regarding attracting my ideal clients. I do that on a daily basis, normally three to four times a day, and I just post to the groups that I love, that I want to work with. And then come December, I started my website. When I started my website, I put everything up there: my story, my about me, my rates, and my services. So it's there. And then I started blogging. I started promoting the website. And that's what happens. And then come February, I started getting clients. So it's very important that you start with social media if you don't have a budget for a website right now. But then, of course, um, I would still recommend that you have a website because most people would not find you in social media. They would type something in Google in search engines. They would look for VAs, and they would look for VAs with websites as well. And based on what they will see in your website, they might or might not trust it. So you have to be very careful with that. And then LinkedIn. LinkedIn, sometimes we thought that LinkedIn is our um, online resume, but it's not. It's our portfolio. Um, so we have to make sure that our LinkedIn profile is optimized. You treat it as your portfolio. It's a networking site, but it's composed of mainly the CEOs and business owners, those who are really serious about getting business. So you have to make sure that you also look like serious business owner as well. And you don't post um, a profile in your LinkedIn that, you know, you don't post something that where you will not look professional. Because as you can see, most of the LinkedIn profiles are really professional looking, you know, people. So I suggest you, you do the same. Next, module three questions. What are you good at? What do you love doing that you would even do for free? Again, that same question. Who do you want to work with? Goes for your ideal client. Make a very detailed description of your ideal client. I even named my ideal client Sam. Oh, um, what's what's her name? Samantha Ross. So my ideal client is a female um, between ages of 35 and 55. Um, she's a VA, or she's a she's a small business owner, and she likes coffee, which I also love, and she pays well. She she understands um, she understands my my weaknesses and my strengths and she appreciates what I do and she's more like a friend to me and she pays well she don't get delayed in every payment so that's my ideal client um, she is Caucasian from the US definitely um, perhaps you can also add uh, how, how tall is she or if a male or a female put a gender and put a belief do you want her to you want her to let's say sorry so noisy ah <laughs> let's pass this 
Okay. All right. Not there anymore. Let me continue. You can um, be creative with your ideal client as much as possible. The more specific you are, the better. What are her hobbies? That way, you can you can look for um, places in social media where your ideal client hangs out. And then, why they want to work with you? Why? Of course. Why would they want to work with you? What do you do best? What do they need? What do they need as a service? Make a list of the things that you can do. Make another list of the things that you love doing, and you'll even be willing to do even if you're free. Okay. And if you don't know the things that you want to do yet, list all the trainings that you need to learn them and just list everything that you can. And then from there, you can separate what you want and what you don't like. Right? But then, most important of all is to determine your rate. Not too low and not too high. The ideal rate for US um, VAs are 20 to $25 an hour. But if you think you're not yet ready to offer that much, you start with what you think you're comfortable with. The secret about it is that you have to feel comfortable with your rate. You can, you have to be able to look your clients in the eye and say, hey, my rate is like this. Because if you can't, don't offer that rate. If you doubt that you can, that you can back it up with the right attitude, with the right services, and the right skills, don't offer it. So if you think that you're, you're not yet worth 20 or 25 hours an hour, do more training. And then do more networking until such time that you will feel that, hey, I think I can raise my rates. Okay, okay. You can get clients for cheaper than that. Okay, and then after such time that you feel that you're already skilled and you can increase your rates for your next client, you get them for, you know, the ideal rate for yourself. Right, what to do next? Start setting up your social media pages, do the regular posting on your niche, Join and start participating in groups. Groups are very important because they give you support and they give you a lot of ideas which sometimes you, will, you won't even realize that those ideas exist. Um, in fact, when I started joining in those groups, some terms were alien to me, like those Aweber, those um, email marketing. Those are alien to me. I don't know what they are. But right now, I'm learning them. I have to learn them and create a marketing plan. Your marketing plan doesn't have to be fancy. Just you know, a plan of what you will do for the next six months or 12 months. Let's say for this month, I want to do um, regular posting on, on all social media. For the following month, I want to um, create a template for my um, services, and then I will send them all to my connections in LinkedIn or in Facebook, something like that. Simple plans. Company policies, they, again, they don't have to be fancy. Company policies such as what day off, what days do you want to take a day off? How much hours do you want to work? Um, how much your rates? Um, how do you want to get paid uh, via PayPal? Um, do you want to do you want to get an advance payment? Do you want to offer a retainer? Do you want to offer a package plan? And then you set the contracts. You there are a lot of contracts online that are free, and then you can start reading the contracts. What do you want? Remove those you don't want and then tweak them, depending on you. And then create a welcome letter. Once you have a client, you send them something like, hey, thank you for working with me. I am sending you my company policies and my contract for, for signing, something like that. Welcome letter. Okay, for module four. In module four, I just gave you a brief, very brief definition of what a search engine optimization is what wordpress.com and .org is, how much a website costs, um, how to get free training, how to market for free, and you have to think with the end in mind. Again, price or ice at the price. And how do you get paid? Of course, there's a PayPal, there's a Western Union, and there's a Payoneer. Right now, I just recently discovered Payoneer. There are the tools to learn. I also put everything there in the module four. So I suggest you check out, again, the um, PowerPoint presentation in SlideShare, or they're all in the ebook, which I will be sending everyone as well. Again, what to do next? Start, you know, doing proposal letter. You make a template, and then you can just change um, a few stanzas depending on where you're going to send them to. Reply to RFPs. RFPs are requests for proposal. That means that clients are looking for VAs, and then you have to answer them. That means you have to apply. You have to answer their questions, you have to go to interviews, that's what RFPs are. 
You have to make sure that your About Me page or your short bio in all of your social media pages are properly written. Don't just put, hi, my name is Roach and I'm a BA. Not like that. You can put, um, I'm a BA and I offer um, blogging and social media and I want to work with uh, VAs and small business owners or um, I want to do bookkeeping jobs for restaurant owners, something like that. Message to client. Again, this should be in your website, but you can include this one if you don't have a website yet. You can include this one in all your About Me page, especially in LinkedIn, because you can put um, a long summary in the LinkedIn page. So start you know, writing and start creating one. And also start getting testimonials. If you have clients, um, ask for testimonials, ask for their pictures and reserve them <laughs> for your website because as soon as you have your website up you have to have a testimonial page. Portfolio of course, who, who you who are able to work with, what are your portfolios. If you're um, a WordPress developer, what are the, the websites that you've designed. If you're a graphic designer, what are the logos and the headers that you've created. And then elevator speech, what is this? An elevator speech is a, a minute or two speech that when people ask, hi, what do you do? Oh, hi, my name is Rosh. Um, I offer VA services or I offer um, virtual assistant services to people outside the Philippines, mostly in the United States. I help them free up their time by you know, getting most of their administrative tasks or by writing their, job, their blogs and by handing their social media pages. So an elevator speech should be consist of your ideal client, what do you do best, and the benefits to them. So you can start writing one as well. Benefits flyer. Um, you can start doing a benefits flyer in pzap.com or in PeakMonkey. You can again you can target your ideal client and what's in your benefit your elevator speech should be in your benefits flyer. What do you do and who do you do that for? Okay? Just you know maybe a three four or five um, things that you can do and the benefits of them. And module five, how to plan your day and actually start working. This is very critical because mostly people stop and they don't know what to do next. They don't know what to do today, the following day. The importance of planning your day and having a calendar is that you know what you're, what you're going to do today and what you're about to do tomorrow and the following days. And you can choose to follow it or not. Again, the importance of self-discipline is there. If you cannot discipline yourself to work with your, with your plans, then it will be very hard for you to start a business. So you have to make sure that your drive to work and your discipline to follow your own plans are there in place every day. And if you think that you don't feel like working today, you watch a video, a motivational video, you go to Zig Ziglar or you go to um, any other websites that can make you feel motivated. Motivation is something that you can that you have to do on a daily basis. It's like taking a bath, taking a shower or sh brushing your teeth. If you don't feel good, you read a quote, you read a quote or you watch a favorite movie of yours where you feel that, you know, you will be motivated. Like the Shawshank Redemption, for me, it, it has a lot of lessons for me, so it's one of my favorite. And then set up your daily, monthly, and yearly calendar. Follow it. Again, follow your daily calendar. Write everything that you need to do for the day. Make sure you do them. If you are not able to do one or two, put them on the following day. And make sure that you also plan your days off. It's important to have a day off because um, you know, giving yourself a day off will make you feel refreshed and will make you feel um, more excited to work for the following day. It will also make you feel, to also make new ideas come in because your mind has been rested and your mind will feel, you know, brand new, like a newly, what's that, um, in cars, when you tune up your cars, it's like, you know, your mind is tuned up. And again, review and check your accomplishments. It's important to, you know, celebrate small accomplishments. Let's say if I'm able to finish my marketing plan, then treat yourself out. You can eat in your favorite restaurant or in your favorite fast food or even in your favorite um, carinderia or you can just, you know, fix yourself your favorite trick. Just 
give yourself reason to celebrate your small accomplishments. Okay? Again, pick your preferred calendar. It can be online. It can be a book type calendar. As for me, I have a notebook type of calendar. The one I got from Coffee Bean. It was given to me by my sister. And also um, a table calendar, which um, all of my plans and appointments and the task to do are there. Um, and then if I wasn't able to do something, I just forward it to the next day. But then it gives me, it gives me, you know, the the feeling that I get to accomplish things when I write it down, especially when I get to check them and cross them out and encircle them. So that's how I do things. Right. And what do you do next? If you think that you really want to become a VA employee, you can start applying now. But if you think you want to become a VA entrepreneur, you start learning the business and you start doing what you need to do. You need to start planning as well. Do you think you need to apply for a job first? Okay, fine. You can apply for a job first. But I suggest if you, if you will be applying for a job, apply for a VA job. Right? Because that will be your training ground in setting up your VA business. And then don't stop. You have to keep on doing something for your business every day, at least one, two, or three hours a day after your shift ends. Let's say you work for six, eight hours a day. You start doing an overtime. Of course, a lot of that for your business for an hour or two a day. Because if you don't a lot of time, you won't go anywhere. Okay? There are other free training videos in our YouTube channel. Just type Rashi Rivera in YouTube and all of the training free training will appear, will appear there. You can also visit the professional VA-academy.com for our courses. Right now I only have the SEO and the VA coaching, but we are planning to launch um, other courses. So please stand by and wait for it. And if you don't have my ebook yet, the ebook is entitled How Did the Filipino VA Make It to US Market Without Leaving the Philippines? I have it in the website. You can download it at professionalva-academy.com slash ebook. Um, all of my business journeys are there. The important blogs that I believe you all need to read and understand. Um, are there and some other stories and all of the presentation by the way the presentation for the VA training modules 1 to 5 are there as well so please download the ebook if you can download it because GoDaddy is acting up for the past couple of weeks now let me know I'll just send it to you by email okay and if you want a more extensive training um, this free coaching is advisable and I also have this free six month coaching program which will run for six months. Um, I plan on doing eight sessions a month or twice a week for the VA business coaching program. It's complete homework, checking and butt kicking. Oh, B-U-T-T, -T. it's wrong spelling, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, that's it will be a um, six month coaching program with everything in it. All of this, um, you know, these what's that modules will be there, modules six to twelve. Um, of course we'll still be tackling modules one to five. Module six will be going back to business foundation, um, social media implementation, client hunting preparation, client welcome kit, um, business operations, the tools you need and the website preparation. So all of this will be there as well. And the VA coaching mod modules for six to twelve before it's priced at forty seven dollars a month or 2,000 pesos, but now um, as a discount I'm giving it for $35 a month or only 1,500 a month. So if you think that you're ready for it, just let me know. But anyway, after that, or after this presentation, we'll go to our coaching right now. Um, with that six month coaching program, I will be working with you until you get to experience a client interview and hopefully until you get hired um, for the six months, for the six months time. So, oops, that's it. I will be unsharing my screen now, and I will go back to everyone. Oops. Hi, can you see me, everybody? You can start unmuting. You have any more questions? Yay. That was quick. Was it quick? It's 45 minutes. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. 
now um for everybody um i'm sure you've all um watched the module one what is your wait let's go back to the goal setting okay for the goals can anybody tell me um if they did their homework for the goal setting um identifying clients services and business model company name and team and color has anybody done that I have. Ah, congrats. Gabs. Prototype. <laughs> Prototype. Jean, yeah. did you do that? <laughs> yes, yeah, some of it. Some of it. All right. Uh, Sheila. Hi, Sheila. All right. Since we're done with the presentation, I'm going to turn off. the. I'm going to stop the broadcast so we can um, talk offline. Or is anybody... Do you want to start and you know do the coaching live on air? Anybody sure. willing to share? Friends, okay, I like that. And then for those who doesn't want to do it um, on air, we can just you know stop the broadcast after everybody who wants to do the on air um, coaching can do the off air coaching after. So for those who are shy, but you can speak in Tagalog if you want. You can speak in English if you want. Okay, so friends. Um, I'll start with you, okay? Sure. Short-term goals, medium-term, and long-term goals. Where are you at? Yeah, well, for my short-term goals, uh, I would like to, to have... Uh, I see myself working three gigs and completing my equipment uh, within the next 12 months and probably, just like you, start my online uh, mentoring program. Um, for my goals for three to five years, I would, I'm seeing myself as managing five VA teams of virtual assistants and supervisors and pro uh, probably have my own home office, which equates to having my own house. Um, for uh, 10 years and beyond, uh, I'm looking to be a major brand with regard to VA services and working four-hour work weeks uh, around the world. Wow, four-hour work weeks. I've seen that with John Jonas. John Jonas right. is the Take owner first. of onlinejobs.ph and he said that he's doing a four hour a week work and I love that too. <laughs> that means he'll just be answering emails and just telling everyone what to do. And it's Take a good that. thing that you have, a, yes, you have a clear view of where you want to go mm -hmm. and you have you have set everything, you know, you, you have, you have um, planned everything. Oh, here. What? This one? Okay. Sorry. Advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have a clear view of where you want to go, and you have um, you have your plans, you have your goals for short term, medium term, and long term. And I love it. Okay. The next thing is, do you have your ideal clients? Uh, yes, I do have my ideal clients. Who do you want to work with? Do you want to work with? Um, what, well, what, uh, what my, my the ideal client that I pictured out was uh, either male or female at around mm -hmm. 35 to 45 years of age. Um, he or she has tattoos. Uh, the male will have a beard and both can have wacky hair. Um, <laughs> he or she can either hail from the U.S. or Australia or New Zealand. That, that's as far as I went. Yes. Um, you have to add what kind of businesses they do. Um, are, they, are they coaches, are they restaurant owners, are they are speakers, or are they um, holistic coach or gymnast, or gym coach or whatever, um, because identifying um, their, their industry and their hobbies, you include that, um, by identifying their hobbies, you can identify the groups where they hang out. So, for example, um, I, I think I recently... Um, I already told you about this one earlier in the presentation that if they if they are in let's say a restaurant industry you can find groups in Facebook and in LinkedIn that are pertaining to restaurants and if you define yourself as um, a, a, let's say a photo hobbyist or a somebody who plays golf you can find groups are, that are um, in golf or in photo or um, in photography so it's easier to find them by refining your your um, ideal client by defining them in the exact way that you want them to be. 
Okay? I'll just an addition. And then the services that you want to offer, what are they? Um, well, I'm into administrative uh, tasks, um, a bit of graphic design, uh, a bit of content writing, and uh, well, website management. That's that's what I want to focus on right now. And uh, in the future, I would like to offer social media services, social media management services, uh, as I learned them uh, when I undergo training. Yes, that's great. I understand. Um, you have to offer what you love doing, and if you don't know it yet, you can always study. You can always learn. The beauty of this business is that you don't stop from where you are right now. You can learn as much as you can and as fast as you can, depending on where you are and where you want to go. So it's good, friends, that you have everything in place. Company name. I know you have a website, a WordPress website. Um, do, you, yeah. do you want to use that as your company name or you want to do, do another one? No, I would like to use that. I was commented on uh, uh, one, one, one client that interviewed me. He said that um, the, the, he likes the name. Well, I've got that a couple of times. It's workingyourbiz.wordpress.com. So uh -huh. it, it tells uh, um, with, how, with the way I look at it, um, it tells clients immediately what I, what I want to do. So um, I, I'd like to keep it. Have you checked on um, GoDaddy or HostGator or Bluehost if it's available? Well, um, I have checked with GoDaddy, but um, uh, I had problems with GoDaddy a year ago. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to go with their services uh, okay. when, when I <laughs> launch my my website. Uh, Bluehost, I haven't checked yet, but I will. Yes, please. Because sometimes, since you have a very good business name, um, they, that might not be available. If it's not going to be available, I suggest you um, create a variation. Let's say, what's that again? Um, do your biz? What's that? Uh, working your biz. Working, yeah, working your biz. B I Z, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, if it's not available, you can put, you can add your name, perhaps working um, your business with friends, something like that. Because um, you have to be ready. Because what what we really want sometimes is not available. With me, before I was able to, you know, think of the best name that I want, it took me two weeks to find the name because they're not available. So, um, let's say for today, I I want this particular name, and I find it when I check on. Um, the domain is not available, so I have to think of another one. So just yeah, yeah. you know, give different variations. Yeah, mine was originally working your business, but mm -hmm. uh, when I tried to, to to do a search in GoDaddy, working a business was not available <laughs> anymore. So I switched to just the biz part, and that that took it. I hope it's still available, and when you find it and it's available, I suggest you buy it, buy it now, um, because a few weeks from now somebody else might be think thinking about it, and because of this, you know, free business coaching, everybody might be buying, you know, a domain in the next few weeks or so. So, um, and one more suggestion: when you buy a domain, before you do that, you find a coupon first just to save. Um, I believe that every um, other domain sites have their coupons spread all over the internet, but you have to be patient in looking, you have to be persistent. Um, just two weeks ago, we bought a domain for Florida. The domain was uh, the Banking Virtual Assistant. Um, it cost $12, but then when we, uh, this, when we deducted the coupons, she only paid more than $3, I think. It's only 149 pesos. Wow. So from the initial price of 550 something. So there's a huge difference, right? right? And you don't have to start doing the website. You can just buy the domain to reserve it for yourself. And besides, website um, hosting can only co cost you from 49, uh, 49 pesos or just more than a few dollars to three dollars. So that's about 50 pesos to 150 pesos a month. So I suggest if you can stretch your budget a bit and you think you're ready to go out there and offer your service to the clients, start creating your website. But if really it's really not yet possible, just start, you know, creating your social media pages and work from there. Yeah, well, I really wanted to start my website already, but um, from past experience, the, the one, the first website that I, that I did with GoDaddy, um, it stopped 
So that that's kind of my problem right now. I, I tend to procrastinate on things and stop at the middle of something. So uh, I would like to postpone uh, the creation of the website until I get everything sorted out first. Yeah, sometimes you really need a butt kicker. Right. <laughs> you need someone to tell you, "Hey, friends, where are you now? What's your what's your homework today? Have you?" Yeah, done that's it? why I'm here right now. For you to <laughs> butt kick me. <laughs> I'm going to do that every day. <laughs> All right, and um, next one, friends. Do you want to discuss that, Jean and Sheila? If you don't, we'll just go offline. And we'll start. We'll stop the broadcast. I muted you, everyone. So I'm going to unmute you. I please just unmute yourself. I can't unmute you. <laughs> Are you ready to stop the broadcast now? We'll just you know talk offline, off air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see. <laughs> All right. So. Um, Everyone, for those who are watching um, at home, I'm sure that you have learned a lot today regarding freelancing and VA business concept. We will just go off air. We will do a little bit more about coaching them. And hopefully you can join us. Just watch more of the videos in YouTube. Always go to my YouTube channel, Rashiful Rivera. And you can go to the website, professionalvas-academy.com slash ebook. If you want to download my ebook, and always go to the slideshare.com. Just search Rashifel Rivera. All of the presentations okay. and the files are there. So you can find everything there, and they're for free. All right. So bye, everyone. Say bye, everyone. Bye. bye. Someone's selling folding bed. Wow. Only in the Philippines that folding <laughs> beds are being carried. And even beds, um, the bed frames are being carried by people and then you know, carried on the street and they're shouting folding bed or bed frame, double deck. That's what they do. Only in the Philippines, guys. You can hear that very clearly. <laughs> okay, bye for now. See you next time on the other training. Bye.